We're going to start this one. It's Casual Geographic. Zebras might not want to tell you. Zebras are one of the most responsible for injuries to zookeepers because they're wildly unpredictable and overall assholes. Life can really go from zero to kick in the chest if you're around one. And the hand-reared ones are the worst because people think they're wild horses when really they're demon donkeys that'll crack your ribs and bite off your hand unprovoked. In a place with lions, bears, and gators, your biggest op could be a pissed off Oreo horse. If you work with foxes, your social life will suffer. Not only do they smell horrible, but the smell of fox bee sticks to hair, clothes, and skin and lasts weeks no matter how hard or long you scrub. Getting R. Kelly by a fox is a great way to make people avoid you like the real one. Rhinos are the world's biggest- That was a wild line. Also, I wonder if you can get into a tomato bath to get rid of that smell like they tell you to do if you've been sprayed by a skunk. Although, I'm not even sure if that's actually true. I've never met someone who was sprayed by a skunk. If you have and you took a tomato bath and it got rid of the smell, let us know. If it doesn't work, I don't know what would be the point of that propaganda, though. Sponsored by Heinz. <laughs> Who else makes tomato juice? Craft Company. Yeah, it has nothing to do with foxes. And most dangerous puppies. White rhinos will eat out of your hand and they love being scratched and for a 5,000 pound armor truck with legs they have the personality of a Labrador. With ducks, you never want to have more males than females. As a rule, you need 4-6 to six males for every female because if you don't, the males will get aggressive and jump the female. I couldn't find the TikTok but basically she was saying a female duck lost her eye because during a particularly violent session, one of the males got impatient and ripped her eyeball out. And since it usually happens in water, multiple males could possibly drown the female. If it is in water, they could break her bones. That sounds very dolphin-esque. If you know, you know. Well, secret zookeepers might not want to tell you part two. Ant eaters are way meaner than they get credit for, and sometimes they'll just snap and take a life for no reason. Like, even jaguars will hesitate to attack them because they're really only one swing away from being a memory. One ant eater oh, wow. mauled a zookeeper so badly that she had severe liver, stomach, and lung damage. And she died. You watch your back if you're in his hood. Tortoises are jaw droppingly stupid. If you leave a bucket around them, they will 100% try to make babies with it, and they'll even give the treatment to an extra curvy boulder. Orangutans are evil pickpocketing geniuses that'll steal items of importance and only return them in exchange for food. Sometimes they'll even break up the object and hand it back piece by piece in order to extort more food, which is unfortunate if they steal your phone, and even worse if they steal an animal like an opossum. It's happened. This isn't a secret, but if you've ever seen a zookeeper cleaning an enclosure and you jokingly said something like, I wonder what animal that is, I can guarantee you that day you got silently cursed out in ways you didn't even know possible. Giraffes can seriously mess you up out of nowhere. Males fight for females by necking, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Sometimes they'll take a swing at keepers not paying attention just to be a dick, and if they connect, they will send you flying. The one day I've they're not nice is the day that. someone gets put on sea yeah. animal. Fact, zookeepers might not want to tell you. Part 3. Koalas are teddy bears with the personality of a chainsaw, and if you have to carry an animal out of its enclosure, you'd have an easier time manhandling a crocodile. They claw, they bite, and they are dicks to other animals. They are so cute, though. Every time a keeper picks one up, their health insurance goes up. Aquariums will have captive breeding programs for dolphins, but since they're difficult to transport for mating, they'll use artificial insemination. Meaning someone gets paid to give Flipper a happy ending and collect the baby maker, and the dolphins oh. are so smart they'll recognize whose job it is, and when they see them, they'll roll over and present themselves. God, if you irritate a member of the Camelidae family, like llamas, alpacas, vicuñas, and of course camels, they don't just spit on you. Zookeepers just say it's spit so you don't totally freak out. What they actually do is regurgitate the content of their stomach, mix it with saliva, and launch it in the face of whoever's annoying them. Piss one off and they'll basically projectile vomit half-eaten grass all over you and dare you to do something about it. Out of all the raptors, turkey vultures are one of the most affectionate and they'll form strong emotional bonds with their keepers. They'll follow their favorite around, greet them when they enter the enclosure, and even play with their socks and shoes. If you ignore the fact that they smell like an open casket in July, they're actually pretty cool. Animal fact, zookeepers might not want to tell you. Meerkats are the spawn of Satan and they conduct themselves as such. If you know anyone who's ever worked with meerkats, ask them to show you the scars. I guarantee you they have them. They are, no exaggeration, the most homicidal mammals on the planet that aren't humans. Do you remember that show that was so big for a bit called Meerkat Manor? It was on Animal Planet. That's where I learned that they weren't so nice. If a zoo announces the death of one of their meerkats and they say it was due to natural causes, it's way more likely that one just straight up murdered another. They're also one of the worst animals for first time zookeepers because if nobody warns them, they'll think they're cute and cuddly and try to feed them by hand. That is exactly how you go to bed with less fingers than you woke up with. Most keepers understand their animals so well that they have no problem being in the same enclosure as tigers, leopards, and bears. But there's one animal that seems to universally scare everyone. Ironically, cassowaries are shy and introverted in nature, but during breeding season, sometimes these hell turkeys decide to catch a body. They are one of the most dangerously unpredictable animals you'll ever be around. Most zoos won't even let workers inside cassowary exhibits without at least two others keeping watch. And they often go in with an attack shield in case this Satan Tweety gets ideas. Orangutans are smart enough to get people fired. In Omaha Zoo in Nebraska, zookeepers kept forgetting to lock the orangutan exhibit and when they would get there in the morning, five males would be posted outside. The head keeper got in his staff for being careless, but after this happened several more times, he was ready to put someone on unemployment. But it turned out one of the males named Fu Manchu found a piece of wire and hid it between his lips and gums, and when nobody was looking, he used it to pick the lock of his enclosure, and then he proceeded to free all of his friends. That seems very human. I always get confused which 
primate is closest to human DNA, if it's the chimp or the bonobo, bonobo. Uh, now I'll check and add whatever I find. It took zookeepers over a week in the threat of being fired to figure it out. Cougars are the biggest pushover of any cat. They're naturally afraid of people, but when comfortable, they'll seek out head scratches and belly rubs all while purring. They're basically giant house cats that could turn you into a headline if they wanted to. Secret zoos might not want you to know. Every zoo has a group of animals that are so dangerous they're kill on sight, meaning if they escape their enclosure or attack somebody, zookeepers are taught to take them out immediately. And surprisingly, a lot of big cats like lions and tigers aren't KOS because they would rather tranquilize and capture them. Even silverbacks are tranquilized first, but there's one animal that's kill on sight in basically every zoo. Chimpanzees, because not only are they homicidal maniacs and incredibly fast and strong, tranquilizers only piss them off. By the time it kicks in, they could have already chewed someone's face off. If one escapes, somebody has to die, and it's usually the chimp. That story is so Travis. Do you guys remember that chimp who, he was very protective of his owner. The owner had a friend come over. He, long story short, he ended up attacking her face, nearly ripped it off. She lived. Travis was shot though. No. I'm gonna find you a video that explains that story a lot better than I just did. Jaws can be incredibly vicious. They look innocent, but those jaws can inflict nasty injuries on animals and people. Tamarin was once harassing a three-toed sloth, which everyone thought was cute, until a sloth clamped its jaws around the monkey's face. By the time keepers broke it up, the monkey had an eyeball hanging out of its socket, and the sloth was covered in blood that wasn't his. Tortoises are dicks for no reason. Sometimes if you go in their enclosure, they'll block off the exit by sitting in front of it. And since the Aldabra tortoise can be 500 pounds of stubborn, you're not going anywhere. A lot of zoos have to rent pandas for a million dollars a year, and it takes another yeah. half a million to feed them, which doesn't even include medical and enrichment costs. It can literally single-handedly bankrupt zoos. zoos might not want to tell you, part 6. A lot of animals in captivity become much worse parents because honestly, zoo animals are just worse at being animals. In the wild, a mother may reject her baby due to drought or sickness. Zoo animals can reject them purely off vibes. Zoo animals also respond way worse to stress, and when a military jet flew over a Sweden zoo, the animals got so stressed and so pressed, they proceeded to tear apart and eat 23 of their babies. It was not pretty. Ooh. Zoos don't buy or sell animals from each other, instead they trade like cards. For example, if you think you would like this big horn puppy, it'd probably cost you about 20 penguins. Two lion cubs could set you back one grand zebra, and if you have more baby giraffes than you can handle, you could trade them in for a Burmese python, a red-tailed hawk, and a miniature pig. Most zoos are strongly against putting price tags on animals because it can encourage poaching. Except these guys. These bastards are too expensive to trade. Animal escapes are pretty rare, but when a major one happens, everyone basically- I was reading an article in Bloomberg, I think it was, earlier this week that was talking about how over in the U.S., by December, they might not have any pandas anymore because the pandas were just on loan from China and I think their contract is expiring and this contract they've had in place since Nixon was in office. So what, 50 years? I'm going to find you that article. They got into the logistics of panda trading and it's curious because every, I think a panda lasts 20 or 30 years in captivity. But when a panda is getting too old, they have to send it back to China. And then if a panda is born in captivity at three or four, while it's still a cub, they have to send it back to China as well. They're just out here Pokemoning pandas. But it was, yeah, it's an interesting article. I'll find it for you. It's a whole world that I didn't know existed. Readjust their fences and enclosures. Kind of like how in class everybody will change their answers if one kid gets it wrong. A lot of zoos had to yes. readjust their tiger enclosure <laughs> because three idiots decided to taunt one and that tiger proceeded to yeet itself over a wall. Can't blame the tiger though, sometimes natural selection comes with a free meal. Things zookeepers might not want to tell you. You probably shouldn't work with your favorite animal for the same reason you shouldn't share an apartment with your best friend. After one week it'll change everything you thought you knew about them. You like penguins? They smell like Satan's <laughs> locker and snap and bite. That's like going traveling with the person you're dating for the first time. Could be great. Could be that you want to break up by the time you get back. <laughs> Anyone? your shins every time you feed them. <laughs> like tigers, tiger poop is one of the worst smelling things you'll ever live through. Like elephants, give one an enema and I swear next day you'll be at unemployment. Don't work with your favorite animal, you'll have a new favorite by lunch. <laughs> Being a zookeeper isn't just playing with animals all day, it's incredibly difficult and ridiculously demanding. They work well over 40 hours a week and often have to sleep at zoos just so they can respond to any emergencies. You go through years of training, applications, and hours of interning all for a starting salary of about less than $30,000. And when you take that much for that little, you're a different breed. But they're so dedicated to the animals that it's worth it. But if you personally know a zookeeper, tell them you appreciate them lord knows they don't hear it enough i'm not into going to zoos but i think the people that work there are a lot of times just 
unsung heroes. Out of all the animals, the most dangerous and the ones zookeepers hate working with the most are the ones outside the cage. No other animal causes more migraines or higher blood pressure than a hairless primate armed with an iPhone and a sense of entitlement. Most zookeepers agree if you kept the animals at band, the people's zoos would be 10 times more fun and I don't blame them for thinking that. Animal facts you definitely wouldn't know unless you worked at a zoo. Walruses are really talented at baiting. In fact, you, you could say they're master baits. They do it a lot. You're probably wondering how a walrus does this. Well, there's two options. One, they slap themselves with their flippers, or two, they're flexible enough to self-service themselves with their mouth. And if you've seen a walrus, you've probably seen one do this. Bonobos will go out of their way to wait until they have a crowd of people around them Bonobo. and then start spontaneously having s*** in front of the audience. They do it on purpose. I don't know why, but literally the more people are around, the more likely they are to ruin the innocence of any child Exhibition. watching. Tigers can't purr, so to show affection, they'll do the same slow blink that your cat does to tell you he loves you. Tigers share 95% of their DNA with domestic cats, which makes sense because they're basically house cats on steroids. They'll cuddle up to their favorite keepers, play hide and seek with them, and of course give them that famous love blink. Tigers are soft. A lot of animals get lonely during the winter because there's less visitors and they're used to seeing people. This usually happens with higher intelligence animals like elephants, primates, and parrots like the African Grey. During COVID, one zoo brought painters into the monkey house just so the monkeys would feel less alone. One Japanese zoo asked people to FaceTime the eels just so they wouldn't forget about people. Top three dumbest things to ever happen at a zoo. I would definitely like to do that. Call me up. FaceTime an eel? I would do it for free. You know, I would pay them to do it. <laughs> when no, number one is not what you think it is. Easily. In 2009, a woman decided to take a flash pass to Jesus by jumping into the polar bear exhibit in a Berlin Zoo. She proceeded to get mauled by four of the biggest carnivores on the planet. At one point, zookeepers were able to pull her out of the pool, but of course she fell right back in. She also did this during the polar bear's feeding time. Apparently, she lost her teaching job and was so depressed that she decided to factory reset her life one of the worst ways possible. And zookeepers were actually seconds away from shooting the bears just to save her. Luckily, she and the polar bears lived. In 2007 in San Francisco, three dumbasses who will not be named decided to taunt Tatiana the Siberian tiger just to see what would happen. What happened was she decided to make the census three names lighter. Motivated by malice, Tatiana jumped over a nearly 13-foot wall and violated all three, murking one and severely injuring the other two. And what's true today was true back then. If you're young and dumb, you will get paid. And after getting sued, the zoo had to pay a 900000 stupid tax of the brothers. It said also Tatiana got shot. Hear me out. If you do something stupid like that, you don't deserve to just sue. In fact, you should have to pay a fine. Stupidity tax. Number one isn't actually this. Because in 2012, a mother lifted her son over a railing to get a better look at the animals. He then dropped the two-year-old into the African wild dog exhibit. Mm -hmm. He survived the fall, but not the dogs. And if you know how African wild dogs hunt prey, you know this was very bad. On top of all that, the mother sued the Pittsburgh Zoo for negligence. Yeah. Obviously, the victim here is the little boy because yeah. nobody deserves that, but um... Yeah, the railing's there for a f***ing reason. Three more of the dumbest That's things sad. to ever happen at a zoo, and number one will make you feel some type of way. In 2017, a man decided he didn't want to pay the price of admission to get into a zoo and instead scaled a 10-foot wall to get in. And best believe a price was paid. Because my man's ended up in the living room of three of the biggest big cats on the planet. The man was brutally mauled in front of horrified guests, and I like to think the last thing that went through his head, other than, you know, the tiger's teeth, was if it was really worth it. You can't put a price no. on life, but this man gambled his entire way of being over $19. Also, one of the tigers died over his stupidity. At number two, you probably know exactly where this is going. Another dumbass who will not be named was a regular at a Netherlands zoo, and she had a habit of smiling at the gorillas and making eye contact, even though trained zookeepers told her not to. She ignored them and said that she had a special bond with the gorillas since they always smiled back. Basically, she pulled a, trust me, I know him, he'll listen to me. Remember what we talked about, this isn't you. Yeah, she played pick me with a 400 pound gorilla and one day Bikido woke up and chose Miralax because he wasn't taking no shit. Bikido escaped, beat the woman like she stole something from him and then broke into a restaurant. Cool. And number Imagine that thing running into your restaurant. Also, I didn't know until just right now that you're not supposed to make eye contact and smile at a gorilla. Good to know. Not that I see gorillas very often, but Okay. For one, in 1987 at Prospect Park Zoo in Brooklyn, a couple boys decided to climb into an exhibit and swim in a moat. Whose exhibit, you ask? Well, originally they planned on swimming in a sea lion pool, but somewhere along the line they decided they just didn't value their lives. They went into the polar bear den. What happened next was two 900-pound murder bears proceeded to play tug-of-war with the 11-year-old's body. Police came and shot the bears, but the boy was already past tense. Did I mention this was all because of a dare? It was a tragic, senseless, avoidable death that never should have happened. May those polar bears rest in peace. As for the boy, he can rest in pieces. Where were his parents? Eleven is quite young to be by yourself. Anyway, this was from a channel called Casual Geographic. If you've watched my channel, you know I like his animal facts. So I'm going to link you his channel and then this specific video in the description. But if you like animal info, his channel's a great one. I've said it before, but I don't like going to zoos. They make me very sad. I understand that they preserve animals and that they 
are places for children to get education about animals that they wouldn't see in the wild. Typically, well, they're not seeing them in the wild anyway, <laughs> but they're mostly in enclosures and cages smaller than their natural habitats for entertainment primarily. Also, they have to drug some of these animals. But a lot of the stories he told just kind of strengthened my position on why I don't visit zoos. Because if an animal's killed due to human stupidity, it just kind of feels, I mean, the gorilla is going to gorilla and the big cat will big cat. And if someone's dumb enough to climb into their enclosure and test them, do they deserve to die? I understand it's a lot more nuanced than that. And then there's a whole other tangent of a conversation we could have for animals that are bred in captivity because we can't just release them into the wild, into an environment that they probably wouldn't survive in because they've essentially been spoon fed all of their life. And then steel manning that, going back to the panda article I read, they were talking about how an average panda lives a lot longer in human care than it would in the wild, for example. And then there's the conservation argument. But I watched a video a while ago that was getting into how many healthy animals are killed in EU zoos. And the number wasn't small. I don't know what channel that was on that I watched it on. It was here on YouTube. I'm going to find that video for you and I'll make sure to link it. But that's just where I stand on zoos. You don't have to think the same way as me. Leave your thoughts. Also, I don't have any book recommendations for you. All of the books that I can think of that have to do with animals, the dog ends up dying at the end, and I read it in grade school, just very sad, so I'll spare you. If you have any animal-related books you want to recommend to each other, feel free to do that. Other than that, just thank you for watching with me, and I'll catch you in the next video.